All right, so clearly that is not actually footage, but that gives you a sense of what's going on here. Yahweh is going to give the people laws that they need to obey. Um, and this is really important, especially for what we've learned so far, because Let's see here. Here's your covenant sandwich. Here's your first covenant with Abraham. It was unilateral. Yahweh just said, hey, I'm going to give you land descendants and a blessing. And we've had all three of those things come into question in our mini series drama. Now we've got another covenant. And in this covenant, Yahweh says it's bilateral. So I will do something for you if you will do something for me. And this is the way it breaks down. If you obey the law that I'm giving you, you'll be blessed. If you disobey it, you will be cursed. And this is important because you remember our likely historical setting in the world behind the text when this was likely written, and it was likely written during the exile or maybe just after to explain to the people, it answers that question, how did this happen? Now, the people would have had the law before the exile. But during the exile, it's getting written down so that people can look at something and be like, oh, yeah, that's probably why this happened. So here we have the giving of the law. Um, a new thing is happening. And let's see here. Uh, we don't need this because I already drew it. So um, this is the huge turning point for the people. When God reached down and made God's covenant with Abraham, it was a very big deal because God was doing something completely new. God was transgressing that boundary between heaven and earth. Now God is going to transgress it in a really big way with this new law because for the very first time, Yahweh is going to live among the people. Now that should pull you up short and you should say, oh, okay, Yahweh is going to live with these people? That's a really big deal. That, in fact, has not happened since Eden, when Yahweh lived among Adam and Eve. And so now, for the first time, God is doing something completely new and is going to live among the people. So one of the things that you get in the law that's given to Moses on Mount Sinai are instructions for something called a tabernacle. And the tabernacle is a big old tent where Yahweh's presence is going to dwell. And you also get instructions for the Ark of the Covenant. And that is also the place where that the Ark of the Covenant is going to act as Yahweh's throne, that Yahweh is going to sit upon in this big old tent in which Yahweh is going to live. So here's a little um, a drawing of what some folks think the tabernacle may have looked like. They may or may not be right, but this is just according to what we have in Exodus about what it's supposed to look like. And all of the instructions in Exodus as far as building the tabernacle are really precise. If you've ever read through the Bible in a year, you probably, if you make it all the way through Genesis and then you get into Exodus, you're probably like, okay, things are going pretty well until you get to the instructions for building the tabernacle, because man, those instructions are really detailed and really boring. It's like, all right, now you're going to have to make, um, make a piece of cloth that has this many different threads in it, and the threads have to be this color, and the dimensions have to be just like this, and it's really precise, and it's really annoying, but what you have to keep in mind is that this place is where God is going to live. So of course the instructions are really precise. If you're gonna have God live in your midst, you're gonna need to get the place right. So we've got right here, this is the outer, um, outer courts right here. And this is where you would wash up and then you could offer a sacrifice. Um, as you go through the outer courts, you come to the holy place, and this is kind of the inner sanctum where you've got a candlestick, you've got some showbread, you've got some things that are kind of making God's house look really cool. And one of the things I do want to point out to you, oh, sorry, too, too much. There is a lot of imagery of nature um, on the decorations, and that's what God commands that you need to put um, 
tree imagery and floral imagery all around this area. And that's because it's supposed to mirror or kind of look like the Garden of Eden looked. Um, this is, importantly, this is holy space. Maybe I should just do this. All right, so this is holy space. And so holy space is not just like any other space. Holy space is perfect. It is, another way of saying it is sacred space. Um, and so this space is very important. It's the perfect space. It's like a little garden of Eden on earth where Yahweh is going to dwell. So um, that's why it's so important um, that it is absolutely perfect. All right, so let's zoom in. And the place where Yahweh is going to dwell is called the Holy of Holies. And here's the Ark of the Covenant, or what it may have looked like. Um, and I guess this little glowy thing is supposed to be Yahweh's presence. But this is where Yahweh is supposed to sit down and take up his residence. I cannot emphasize to you enough how important this is, um, that everything is just so in the place where Yahweh lives. And so what I've done is I have included, let's see here, Firefox, why did you, yeah, all right. So what I've included is, and there may be bad words here, um, I have included this little BuzzFeed deal um, of things that are just not quite right. And this is all stuff that can happen in space that is not sacred space. This is mundane space. So here we've got mundane. Um, and things like this, like a wall and a ceiling that don't line up can happen here, but they cannot, it cannot happen in sacred space, which is why we have to be so careful when building the tabernacle and why it gets so boring um, when you're reading through. I used to be able to, let me see here. Huh, I think everything just froze. It did. I don't know what to do. Okay. Let's see here. I can't do anything. I'm sorry. Everything is frozen. There's nothing that can be done. Oh, I was able to do that. Let's see if I can just stop the meeting. Nope. 